Hey, it's creeping net, and today for Sep Tandy, we're gonna bring back the Tandy One Thousand. Yeah, um, I had another YouTube channel. I might even start releasing some of those old computer videos uh, for uh, throwback Thursdays or something like that. Um, but today what we're going to talk about and we're going to play around with is my 1985 Tandy 1000A. Um, this computer, uh, its history is I bought it from Value Village in Everett, Washington for about $10 in 2007. Um, any of you who've been following me for any great period of time, uh, at least on the computer side of things, probably know... Um, that uh, probably have seen a lot of this computer. Um, and it has been through a lot of changes. It's actually all original, but it has a lot of secret sauce added to it, and I'm planning to add some more to it eventually. Um, let's start with the, let's start a little bit with the Tandy 1000 series and what it means to me and what this one means to me. So my first computer was a Tandy 1000. It was a Tandy 1000 SX that I got in 1997 from my uh, second older sister, Lee. Um, it was uh, 8088 dual speed, 6 megahertz, and a 4.77 megahertz system. The 360K double-sided, double-density floppies were white instead of black. The case was a little bit wider, and uh, but it was still the same general design. That computer unfortunately died because the programmable interrupt timer chip became dislodged and I was constantly having to uh, reseat it. And uh, that computer specs, it started out with 384K memory and no hard drive and at the end at 640K and I was still playing games off of floppies. This Tandy is the one where I righted all those wrongs and it was actually during a line, if you maybe remember, if you even followed my computer stuff, I had a Tandy 1000HX, which I eventually uh, donated to a collector in Seattle way back when these things were still affordable before young Sheldon drove the prices up, unfortunately. Um, this unit, otherwise, <clears throat> all original. It's a 640K. It's got the Tandy 640K upgrade card in it, so full 640K memory. Intel 8088 at the classic PC, IBM PC XT 4.77 megahertz. Um, it's got a, if I'm not mistaken, it's got a three, no, it's got a Realtek RTL 8019 Ethernet adapter. And it's got a original XT IDE card from when Vintage Computer Federation was originally called Vintage Computer Forums. And I remember when they first started doing that, I ordered two cards, one that I put together myself and totally screwed up and then sold to another member who fixed it and used it, probably still using it. And then there's the one that I got that was pre-built and that's the one that's in this. Um, attached to it is a three gigabyte Seagate hard drive from my NEC Ready Tower that I'm probably going to be selling off or auctioning off soon. Um, it's still got the original double dual-sided uh, floppy drives in it, uh, 360 kilobyte each. Um, I have I, this unit, I got it just as the base unit. I'm kicking myself because the monitor turned up at the thrift shop like a couple weeks after I bought this, the original Tandy monitor, and I skipped over it because I just was like, I have two EGA monitors. I had like the earlier version of this NEC. Uh, I think it was like the uh, JC1401, uh, whereas this one's the JC1402, you know, the multi-sync 2. So... And I also had like an IM Tech EGA monitor as well. And those monitors were kind of my nine pin monitors at that time. Uh, so yeah, I really kicking myself. I could have had the original SEP. I really got to wonder because around the time I got this and the Tandy 1000 EX I had at that time, I also found a whole pile of floppy disks and little 3M floppy disk holders with Tandy 1000 stuff in it and bought like a whole pile of big box DOS games that were all Sierra titles that work with the Tandy 1000. So that's kind of my history with this computer. Um, the Tandy 1000 line itself, the history of it is it started in 1984. Tandy was designing the computer to be a PC Junior compatible, which is the thing I don't think my sister or uh, half, you know, 
I, I don't think she realized what this thing was actually capable of. I mean, when I finally went back and researched it years later, I was kicking myself for letting that SX go because the, these things are actually probably the best 8088 based PC you can get from the 80s. And they weren't even that expensive when they were new. They're $999. Actually, I think the uh, EX and HX were like under under a thousand most of the time. The one thousand, this looks just like the original one. There's two versions. Of the original, this is a one thousand A. The original is just called the one thousand, and I'll tell you the differences in a minute. So the original one thousand was released in 1984. Tandy was originally going to try and clone the IBM PC Junior but they wanted it to be more like a regular PC in the fact that it has three standard industry standard architecture slots in it. So it could take standard floppy drives, standard slots, no cartridge ports. Um, they did have one little gotcha with the Tandy though. So these port, this might look like your regular DIN keyboard port for our regular XT, but it's actually a special Tandy. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's a special Tandy eight pin uh, keyboard connector there that's not like a regular uh, five pin din and this is but to go along with it you also notice you have two joystick ports here and these are special to the Tandy as well and they're actually for the TRS-80 line and I'll get to that a little more but that's kind of what makes a Tandy 1000 a Tandy 1000. Uh, that plus it has the enhanced 16 color graphics of the PC Junior and it has the uh, Texas Instruments SN series chip, three voice, square wave generator audio, which is way above what an IBM could do. IBM, you just had single channel audio and maybe four color CGA at most until EGA came out, which EGA is a little bit better than this, but this is still, this is, I consider the Tandy 1000 series to really be the original multimedia PC or the uh, proto multimedia PC because it's got enhanced sound, enhanced graphics. Um, it's made for gaming. I mean, even this one at Pokey 4.77 megahertz doesn't do too bad, though I do plan to put a V20 in this one eventually, which is totally fitting anyway, since it does indeed have a uh, NEC monitor. <laughs> Yeah, join my verses. So, that's the thing. So you had the original version. The original version of the Tandy 1000 had no direct memory access controller. Um, it came with 256K memory. If you get direct memory access, I think you had to add an expansion card. There was no slot for the eight, Intel 8087 Mathco processor in the computer, which was a chip that you used for doing things like CAD. Or In the case of the Tandy, this thing will run the original SimCity, and it actually runs it really well. Um, especially considering it's a 4.77 megahertz uh, XT clone, basically, or PC Junior clone. So... The original 1000 came out, the 1000A rectified those issues. So this one has the coprocessor slot um, and it has direct memory access. It also has the 640K upgrade. Um, these original ones, they came with one or two double-sided, double-density floppy drives, um, 360 kil kilobyte, of course. And the 1000A was just sort of to rectify those problems. Um, in 1984, Five was when this one came out. Then in 86, you got the 1000SX and the 1000EX. The 1000SX, um, they changed the chassis material from uh, steel to aluminum under the plastic. They made it a little bigger. They added two more expansion slots, bigger power supply. These floppies were white instead of black. Um, this, I actually lucked out and got an original 1000 keyboard. The 1000 SX actually tells you the first four function keys. So they changed the function keys for TV mode on the 1000 SX and 1000 EX. And, uh, yeah, so, and I'm superimposing pictures again, you know, the 1000 EX came out the same year, same deal as the 1000 SX. It's basically an all-in-one 1000 SX with one 360K double-sided floppy drive, a headphone jack, a volume control, and to use these special cards called, I think, plus cards. They were basically wired just like regular 8-bit ISA, but they were basically, but they basically would stack on top of each other on a super long set of like, uh, 
pin connectors inside the back of the computer. Then after the 1000SX and 1000EX, you had the 1000HX, which was the next all-in-one that had the three and a half inch floppies and hard drive. And I think that one was an 8086 or a 286. I'm not 100% sure. And then there was the 1000... Uh, 1000 HX, I think it was. Maybe I'm getting them confused, but I'm, I'm mostly hep to the 8088 Tandies because I don't really go beyond that. So you had like the HX and the EX, you had the 286s, like the RL and RXs. Um, there was even a 386 version of the Tandy 1000, and by that point, they were running a much newer version of Deskmate and all that. So that's kind of the thing. The Tandy 1000 is actually, especially the 1000A and 1000SX are my two favorite Tandy 1000 models because these were uh, these were the bee's knees in the 80s. I mean, you had three voice in, you had 16 color video, you had joystick ports. It's not incredibly hard to use for someone starting out. That said, they are getting kind of expensive now because of the basic fact that... Uh, TV show called Young Sheldon had made this computer a star again. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about mine. Uh, we're not going to pop the cover today. I popped the cover in a previous video and did some power supply repairs and stuff on my previous channel. Maybe I'll upload that for this Thursday or uh, maybe you'll see it before this. Anyway, um, my 1000A started out bone stock, two 360K floppy drive, 640K RAM, no expansions of any kind otherwise. Um, it originally ran with a SCSI card in it for a while. A lot of the SCSI stuff that was in this is now in my Gem 286 down here. Um, the uh, network adapter originally had a 3COM uh, 3C509 in there. 16-bit uh, card put into 8-bit mode with a jumper, but now it's got the real tech card in it, which has been a lot less fiddly than that uh, 3COM card was. Um, I still have the 640K memory upgrade. When it had SCSI originally, it started killing SCSI drives because I didn't have enough airflow back here, and I was using older drives at higher power consumption. Now I'm using smaller ones. There may come a time I might actually be uh, upgrading the Tandy to use one of these smaller, lower capacity drives because even with three gigabytes, it's just way too much for an 8088. And I have a whole pile of these uh, two and a half inch hard drives from my NEC Versa laptops that actually still work beautifully, ranging from 128 megabytes all the way up to 500 megabytes. And I think that's more acceptable for the Tandy 1000, plus they're very low power consumption. So um, this computer, when I got it, had no monitor. I used it with IM Tech and all that. Um, I'll tell the briefly about the monitor here. This is a 1987 NEC JC1402 HWA NEC Multisync 2 monitor. The multi-sync monitors, these were the monitors you can run with anything. I've plugged this thing into so many different computers at this point that it's amazing. This monitor has run on the Tandy. It's run on my 286. It's run on my 486. I've run it on the Pentium. I've run Windows 10 through this monitor with one of my old computers. I mean, one of my newer computers. Yeah, this is a almost 35, 40 year old monitor and it's able to actually process a signal from Windows 10. It goes to show you, I mean, these are excellent equipment. And this is one of the reasons I've always been kind of a big fan of NEC. They just, they make real good equipment that lasts really well. Um, the, the, I'll put the full video up on my channel, but as sort of a retroactive thing, because I need to probably close off my old The Creeping Network channel, since this is all kind of getting consolidated anyway. But I got this monitor at a Redmond Washington thrift, or uh, Redmond Washington computer shop called Computer Surplus. And those guys, I was looking for CRT monitors at the time, and I found this in the bin and I immediately took it out to my truck. I brought it home. The common problem with these is there's a controller board in back that automatically switches it between a TTL, you know, transistor to transistor logic, and the analog picture for VGA. Because this monitor will do monochrome, CGA, EGA, T2, 
TGA, the Tandy stuff, which is why it's on my Tandy. It also does VGA. It also works with con- with adapters. It works with the Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, uh, a lot of different computers. So this is just a useful monitor for so much. It's one of my, uh, this is one of my keepers. I'll never get rid of this thing because it's just, it, it's so useful and it's so easy to fix. So... <clears throat> I even found the service manual, which is on my website for download. So let's scoot in and take a look at this. Um, This monitor is just like a lot of EGA monitors and multi-sync monitors at the time. I have all these switches here that can control it. It can pretend to be monochrome, even when in EGA or CGA mode. Or and you can change the phosphor color. You can adjust. It has like every kind of an adjustment. So. yeah, and then I found the original 1000 keyboard down here. Um, I bought that on eBay for about $50 untested. It looked absolutely horrible. I uh, used magic erasers on it to bring it back to life. This was back around 2010, right before I met my wife. And yeah, because this thing had to sit around for a while. And then right after I got the keyboard, I got rid of the EX because I just, you know, I just didn't like using it as much. Um, something that's not in the original video for this though, is this Tandy deluxe mouse. I have been chasing this down for years and I finally found this on eBay untested for like five bucks. And I don't think they knew what it was. It says Tandy down here. There's probably a better picture of it online. Um, this mouse is designed for the Tandy TRS 80 line, but it also works with the Tandy 1000 with a special DOS driver. And I almost always plug it in a joystick port too. may do a future video where we make some custom, uh, digital game pads for the Tandy 1000. Cause I'd really love to play some games on this with the game pad. Cause I prefer that. Hey, I grew up with Nintendo, you know, so <clears throat> the deluxe mouse is not like a normal mouse. You can see it has a heavy steel ball in it. Um, it, unlike a regular mouse, this ball does not just keep going and going and going and going. It actually goes to a point to one side and stops. So it's really just a joystick with a mouse interface in it. If you go too far in one direction, it stops. You'll feel it more if you're, you know, dragging it on the surface of something. Like you heard that little, yeah, you heard that little dragging noise there, that little that is when the mouse bottoms out on the uh, potentiometers in here that, <coughs> excuse me, a little dusty. The potentiometers inside this mouse that make it work. Um, we're gonna demonstrate this. Um, this Tandy is fully connected to the internet via broadband. Yep, my old computers do go online, including the tan- Tandy 1000. Um, I've got set up with Mike Brutman's MTCP suite. I've got, I mainly use this one for bulletin boards because, I mean, in 8088 with 40 column text mode with the raster lines and everything that this monitor has is like the ultimate 80s computer experience. It's freaking awesome. And then you have the three voice and all that other stuff. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and get some stuff prepared. We'll put this in my uh, little stand here and we'll have some fun with the Tandy today. All right, so I'm gonna start a new game here and hopefully that should do what it's supposed to do. We're running in normal mode now, so maybe it won't be so cranky. So let's create a new character. Of course, it'll take it a few moments to catch up and do its thing. And I found out that for some reason the Tandy audio is not going through the TV. Not sure why. So let's see here. I would call Creeping Net. Mail. Portrait, 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 portrait. I usually look kind of mean these days, so I think I'll continue with that guy.
Welcome, O Seeker. And this has the fast graph mod on it, so it's moving pretty swiftly. Kind of surprisingly swiftly. And these are actually really good. This isn't that far from the VGA graphics that I have on most of my other computers. Only stroll. Beckoning you across the wagon's threshold as it happens into another life. So this is every Ultima game for PC from Ultima 4 onward had this kind of questionnaire at the beginning that determines your character's stats based upon the eight virtues. It would ask you these open-ended questions and you would make decisions on what your character... Uh, it would, it, it, you'll see. So right now we're just waiting for it to catch up and do its thing and shuffle some memory around. Here we go. So in Ultima 6, the way it works is basically you have these six vials that represent the eight virtues. And then she mixes up a potion of these, and yeah, you'll, you'll see. So, pour the light of virtue. Oh, no. I think she just went to the store and bought all the sodas. <laughs> I mean, what do we got here? Uh, Fanta blueberries, that pineapple stuff I've drank once. Coca-Cola, Mountain Dew. No, actually, that's Mountain Dew. That's Surge. That's some bubblegum soda from Rocket Fizz. That's... That looks kind of like Dr. Pepper. That looks to be um, Squirt. And it looks like we right here, we have some really dark stuff. Maybe that's Pepsi. All right. Yeah. So she's going to make us a suicide, I guess. <laughs> you know that. Okay, now here's where we start with the questions. Thou art sworn to uphold a lord who doth participate in the forbidden torture of the prisoners. Each night their cries of pain reach thee. Man, that's metal. Dost thou, A, show compassion by reporting thy deeds or honor? Well, let's see. What would old creeping net do? You know what? I hate ignoring things. I'm angry at the world doesn't show justice. I'm going to choose A, compassion. So, here we go. And as you can see, she's pouring the yellow juice of compassion into her flask. Thy lord doth mistakenly believe he slew a dragon. Thou hast proof that the lance felled the beast. When askest thou, A, honestly claim thy kill, or B, humbly permit thy lord his belief. You know what? The truth shall set you free, so I pick A. <laughs> Yeah, nice. We have a blueberry pineapple smoothie getting started. I can get behind this. Thus spent thy life, charitable, righteous work, tab. Sacrifice thy life to purity and aid thy kin or be declined and follow the call of spirituality. Yeah, I'll take over the tavern. <laughs> yeah, and... It, I know this is slow going, but we're playing this on an Intel 8088, and I know I've said it a hundred times, but it is what it is, man. I say, be justly your eyes and demand an apology. There's just no justice in this world. And I really like this element of Ultima. I trust the delivering kind of person. Hmm. I'll show some compassion here. I don't think I've shown it. Oh, no. I have a feeling this is going to be a lot of Surge, a lot of Mountain Dew, and a lot of Blueberry. And I could be selecting these with the mouse, but I just chose not to. And I know this is a slow-going video, but, you know. I'll sacrifice my own life to aid him, because somehow I'll find a way to finagle my way out of it and not get killed. That's just how life works for me, for some reason. Just when I think everything is utterly at the utmost freaking horrid dire. 
somehow there's that one little detail, and if I can find that one little detail, stop a compassion and be separate. And I'm gonna do a bigger let's play of this later, but I just want to show the game on the Tandy. Aid wounded comrade. Whatever. I'm, I'm going to stop taking it so seriously now. Hit A accidentally. Oh well. Well, I probably would stop in compassion to aid a wounded com comrade compared to sacrifice. And now, yeah, get out your magic bullet, uh, gypsy lady. I mean, the artwork in this game is just awesome. 16 color or 256 color. Even, actually, I played this in CGA, and it actually looks great. I did it out of curiosity to see if it would actually run faster, which it doesn't. So you can see now, the, 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 the slow fade. Honestly, though, this part, I would say, actually means the 8088 gives a more accurate experience of what it probably would have been in real life. So I'm pretty sure as this stuff puts you on whatever crazy trip that you're probably on, <laughs> you probably would suddenly come to, to Papa Emeritus with an Anka staff coming out of the sky. Actually, that's probably who that, who that would be if uh, I use my big red character. Usually on Ultima, I use Doug the Eagle's save games thing, so then I can go ahead and have multiple games. I usually have one where I'm named Big Red and I'm just an awful bastard. <laughs> yeah, you're coming out of the sky. Arise, our great one. The ritual! <laughs> Welcome year zero. <laughs> Ultima VI and Ultima V, chronicle your perilous travels. Yeah, Ultima 4 and 5, chronicle your... It's actually not going too terribly bad once it finally dumps the stuff out of memory. But yeah, this is how I played Ultima 6 back in high school. And it's why I didn't play it very much, because this computer was just not fast enough to keep up. I don't know why the sound isn't going through the TV speaker thing. You see why I called this Drunk Ultima? It's really slow. This is like gotta be one of the most dramatic PC game scenes ever. You can offer a protest to the creatures who surround you, scaly claws grasp your body. It's scary how much this guy actually looks like me. <laughs> With unearthly strength and monsters bind you to the altar stone. These guys are pretty horrifying, but they're actually pretty cool guys. Keep kneeling the hordes away and chant as a stately winged creep nightmare steps forward. The leader unwraps a velvet-covered brass-bound book and recites from it in a formal, stilted tongue. Yeah, these guys start every sentence with two. To be pleased to meet you. To want to know your health. To wonder what is going on. I never realized that the Tandy had the star, twinkling star effect. I mean, that's just dramatic, man. A dying scream. Your own curdles the air. I mean, and now it has to do the dissolve fade out that goes like at 4.77 megahertz. <laughs> I'm going to probably have to cut this video because it's going to be over like hours long now. The experience of Ultima 6 on a Tandy 1000, about as accurate as I can give you. I'm going to run out of space on my phone. I mean, it's 11 minutes long already and we've created a character. 
Cat calls the dagger, a scream, death. Pandemonium shrieks of rage, terror. And from the inevitable, an impossibility emerges. You are still alive. Yeah, so here he is. The man of the hour. Or shall I say, men of the hour. Yeah, the little tiny Bob Ross inside the CPU is running back and forth painting his happy trees as fast as he can, but he didn't have enough coffee this morning. Or a V20 cola. So, yeah. Happy stars. Happy, happy stars. Come on. I'm going to spare you all this. I'm just going to hit escape. If I can. And nope, that doesn't work. So yeah, you have to wait through this extra long cut scene. Hiya, guys. Yeah, we got... Uh, Dupre, Shimino, and Elo come to save us from this horde of angry, uh, yeah, the, the, just to summarize Ultima 6, this is actually another one of those games like Dragon Warrior 4 that really impressed me. Because it's a game that's does. there's no big bad guy and there's no big plot. Spoiler alert, but Ultima 6, the story of it is we're in peace times in Britannia and the gargoyles have started going to the shrines of the eight virtues and killing people. And so... And so what ends up happening is you're tasked to dispense of the gargoyles, but in reality it's because the gargoyles are upset because there's social injustice. It's 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 like Black Lives Matter, but gargoyles, you know. Red winged lives matter. <laughs> I guess you could say. Because this is the one that leads to them being some of the greatest allies in the series. And honestly, I would, you know, when I was a little kid and I didn't understand the story to this and its actual social uh, impact, I was just sort of like, oh yeah, I'm just going to run around and kill these little winged demons. It, it really, it's really cool how Richard Garriott really put some really deep storylines into these Ultima games from four on forward. And now we're going to sit here for a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and... Um, stop the video and we'll just cut this section. So Ultima 6 didn't really kind of work out. Um, I'll figure out what's wrong. I've had some problems with that game getting corrupted when I uh, try to do stuff, so we'll play some other stuff. Why don't we? I um, waited a few minutes, I'm kicking off for lunch and just shooting more footage, so for Septandy, let's get started um, with some more DOS game stuff that runs on it. Let's play Ultima 5. Or actually, the games. Let Ultima 5. Ultima. And here's how Ultima 5 runs on here. And this was the game I used to play on my 1000 SX a whole bunch. This one doesn't have the cool Tandy sound, but it does have the uh, 16 color tandy graphics on it. And as you can see, it does a glorious job, especially with the speed up. It basically runs just like my old 1000SX did. Um, so here we are. Ultima 5, Warriors of Destiny. This is another good one. This one is, uh, this one is kind of like the Frank Zappa story of the Ultima series. It basically, uh, is about legislating morality. If anyone, any of you old enough to remember the PMRC hearings from the 80s, this is kind of like the same thing, but video games. So here we go. And we'll just journey onward. I already have a character created. And I think we should 
and it's going to be a little louder because this one only has internal speaker audio. I mean, you could grab the crops. For food, I have plenty of food. You can see this is about the speed Ultima 5 runs on here. It actually runs better on the 286. So I'll show you, yeah, I'm going to show you guys some Ultima on here. And yeah, I know the sun is glaring through the window today. So you exit the town, and then you could go over to the city. This is the game that has the Shadow Lords in it. Let's see if Britain's got any Shadow Lords. Now if you... Whoa. Walk up to the sign. Let's do a look. Blackthorn's Law of Compassion. Thou shalt help those in need, or thou shalt suffer that same need. See what I mean? This is what they're talking about. Now, we're just going to roam around here. I spent hours playing this. Another fun story about me and my old Tandy 1000SX was it was marching band. Yeah, I've mentioned it in another video. I don't know if that video is going to come out before this one or that one. So I used to play in a marching band in Opelika called the Opelika High School Spirit of the South. Uh, we were the best marching band, ones at contest, whole nine yards. Well, it was right right before contest, about a week before we played a football game at a... We played a home game at the Bulldog Stadium, and at the end of the night I came home and I noticed that my chest was incredibly zit-covered, or so I thought. Now... The next morning I wake up, now I got zits all over my body. I'm like, what the heck? And then I'm like, there's no way in hell I'm going to pop all these. And thank God I didn't. So I hadn't had chicken pox. So what happened was at the beginning of my ninth grade year of high school, I finally got chicken pox. And I got it at the football game. And it was on my chest the night before. And now it was so bad I had to take literally a week out of school. So on the TV cart next to my bed, I had my Tandy 1000, and this is what I did when I wasn't doing the schoolwork that they sent for me to do. So, yeah. And as you can see, this game isn't that fast either. That's why we had to kind of wait around on Ultima 5. And I'm making this video to kind of give you an idea of what... Um, playing Ultima was kind of give you an idea of what an 8088 is truly capable of. So this is, yeah, this is going to be a long video. Um, let's go down here. Anyway, we're going to go down. I'm trying to keep my voice from going up high and getting too loud because I feel like I'm probably driving you all nuts with, with it, but eh. I really like how an Ultima, they had a consistent, they had day and night cycles in consistent form. And this game actually, the one before it was what inspired Dragon Quest, or one of the games it did. I don't have wizardry on here, at least not yet. We might explore it one day. Actually, I wish I could learn to program well enough that I could port Dragon Quest to the Tandy 1000. Because I think the Tandy 1000 would be a great computer to port Dragon Quest to. I mean, it's got the graphics, it's got the sound, you could get the same vibe. I could totally get it to probably scroll smoothly, because I've got games on this that scroll really smooth. So we're going to enter Trinsic. There we go. And that this is what happens when the Shadow Lords are in town. So you have an uh, Air of Hatred. If thou dost lose thine own honor, thou shalt take thine own life. See how that guard is following me? He's going to attack me if I give him a chance. Asshole. But yeah. If you get out of here, if you can get around the guard...
see this asshole? And usually if you go around and as we continue with a tirade of Tandy 1000 footage, I want to kind of show you a game that I really, really, really like. Um, let's just go ahead and boot in MS-DOS. And we're going to do, 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 go on to normal. Fast.com. And we shall go to WAI. No, oh, wait, no. CD slash games. Slash S. And then this game is called Street Fighting Man. I'll probably do a more serious Let's Play later, but let's go ahead and uh, zoom in on the computer so you can see a little more of what's on screen. And I don't want to use a joystick. Yeah, I want music. Um, okay, and now we shall hit a couple keys and I should fire up the game. Take it a few moments. But yeah. I'm trying really hard to video this monitor. And I'm. I don't know why the Tandy 1000 audio is not going through the TV like the rest of it. And it's just only internal speaker audio, but eh, whatever. Gang Violent Strikes. Denver, Colorado. Let's hit Spacebar. Pretty good little graphics. Use the, uh, on Tandy, use the, uh, keys here on the, uh, numeric keypad to move. Control to duck and grab stuff, shift to kick, and space to punch. So, I'm gonna go ahead and walk down here. I love this part up top of the screen. Nick is cool. Alright, my name's Nick. Let's turn off that music. It gets kind of annoying after a while. So, now we're gonna go kind of wander on down the street, entering shark territory. So, you start off in neutral turf and then end up walking into these various street gangs. Uh, the Sharks are basically a bunch of chicks that look kind of like um, Tawny Katane. <laughs> that's my that that's just my assessment of what they look like. Hey, it was 87. This is the perfect game to go listen to some White Snake. And the Sharks don't really attack you. They just sort of stare at you with their hands on their hips like they're ticked off at you for not doing the dishes or something. I gotta say that the artwork in this game is amazing for 16 color TGA, but and as you can see, the load times aren't too bad either. So you walk down here, you see the sharks don't do anything. This is sort of like wandering around, uh, uh, yeah, there's a strange guy in our neighborhood, so I don't even bother attacking him. I consider them more or less just allies. Oh, did she start trying to attack me? She didn't really do anything. Oh, here comes someone to kick. Ooh. Okay. Oh, you're going to attack me now. Okay, fine. I guess I was wrong. They do attack. Well then. Domestic abuse in a video game. And I didn't see anybody whining about this instead of Grand Theft Auto. They're all named Blondie. I'm not sure why. Anyway, we've taken out two people. Yes, now we gotta wait. 
Nick is cool. Oh, man. So now it's like Mr. Leahy and Greaser Guy. I tend to find kicks do the most work. Especially these... Get down, old man. Come on. Ah, nice. There you go. Beat him into su submission. Nick is a tough guy. Uh-oh. Well, who we got here? Oh, look, it's more of the old man brigade. What, they didn't have enough Walt Milwaukee's best for you to cool you down? What, the parts didn't come in for your Camaro? Here. Gah! Wow. And they're like, I'll teach you a lesson, young man. You know? <laughs> Come on. Okay, principal. Lay down. Lay the heck down. Uh oh. Uh-oh, I gotta escape. Or I gotta fight with the police. I, I've never seen the police in this game yet. And I was playing this on the NEC Versa, and I was just kicking literal butt at it. We'll just play this until we die. Uh-oh. Oh! It's Disco Man. Eh. He just shrieks. So this game has a wanted level, like GTA. Who would have thunk it? The graphics are outstanding, though. It's actually quite fun to play. I did, this is one of my more recent favorite games, and I just kind of found it by accident because I downloaded it like a million years ago. It says, Nick is a bad dude. I am a bad dude. I'm killing everyone in town by kicking them and punching them. Ah oh, man. Okay, you want a piece of me? You want a piece of this? You want a piece of this? There you go. Knock them out. Oh lord. Don't make me break my foot off in your ass. Down for the count. Jeez. Jeez, they just keep on coming, don't they? You want a piece of this? Huh? Huh? What, you afraid? Oh, come on. Leave the scene. No, officer, I just left my house. I'm gonna go get myself some lunch. <laughs> I am not up to no good. I am up to good the whole time. Swear, Scout's honor. <laughs> Come on. Why can't I go up this street? What the heck was that? This may be the first time I encountered any kind of idiosyncrasy in this game. Nick is Mondo Macho. Let's see if I can walk up the street. Ah, oh, great. More of the Old Man Citizens Brigade. 
Can't you guys just go back to the bar and watch the football game and leave me alone? Come on, don't you have... Don't you have, like... Don't you have, like, some MAGA hats to wear and some other crap to fucking do? Just get... Go away, old man. Okay. Yeah. So they've kicked my ass. Come the police. Oh man. Oh, I found my girlfriend. Here we go. Oh crap. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a. Uh... So that's um, Street Fighting Man for DOS. And we're playing this on my Tandy 1000A. So I hope you enjoyed it. I think this is a pretty good game. I actually really quite like it. Um, yeah, but Blondie, you just go away. So anyway, I'm going to shoot some more video. And here we're gonna look at another cool game. It's called Arkanoid. This is another great one for the Tandy 1000. Play it with a mouse. This is actually a pretty good port of Arkanoid, and I'm playing it with the deluxe mouse. Let's play some Arkanoid. So, I'm thinking I might have a way to actually... I'm thinking I might actually have a way of actually getting the sound out of this, too. From the internal speaker, so we might actually put a new audio cable in there. I'm going to play like three rounds of this, sort of to show it off. I'm actually terrible at these games. I was doing quite well with it for a while. There we go. Yeah. I don't know why my audio sources aren't mixing anymore on the Tandy, but we'll see.
now we're starting to have a good round of this. I think a lot of it is I was looking at the smaller screen because it's in color. Right now we're in black and white on the TV, and it's not going so bad. It's basically breakout. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those good ones for the Tandy 1000 to play. Actually a good one. And here we go, I made a high score, so we'll do that. Um, there you go. It's actually my highest score on this so far. We'll shoot some more video footage of some other great games here in a moment. So while videoing some game footage, I made a very interesting discovery about the Tandy 1000 while making this vi series of videos. First off, here's game mode on the TV. I mean, look how nice this looks. This is a 93 Magnavox 27 inch. And I mean, just look at the picture quality coming off that Tandy on composite. You probably saw in the Arkanoid segment of this video that the Tandy was an outputting audio to the internal speaker. So, or outputting audio except for the internal speaker to the TV at all. So I was only getting it, getting it on the uh, computer not sure what causes that. Um, so we're going to try some experiments here <coughs> with the machine and I'm just going to hold the camera and candid. So this proof here we have the Tandy over here and here we have it on the TV. Now let's go walk forward. Ooh, there we go. These Sierra games are probably the best stuff for a Tandy 1000 and I've got a bunch of them on here since I have bunch of big box DOS games right up there in the closet. <laughs> going all the way back to the end. Um, we're going to go to speed and go to fastest. And then we're going to wander on over here. And this room goes particularly slow because there's a lot going on. You got the ceiling fan. You got that guy that won't shut up. You got er, all that stuff. So... See, and it wasn't doing that before with any of my other, um, any of my other Sierra games for, or any of my other games that weren't Sierra. Like, let's go back to Ultima Six and see if it does it now. Because somehow it wasn't working. So you go see, we're in T, we're not even in TV mode, and it actually works properly. Slash games. Ultima Flash. Monkey Island also wasn't working as well. So we'll put I'm just experimenting with the Tandy, doing a few things while I wait for my lunch to cook. Yeah. So let's see how Ultima Six runs now. This is not in TV mode, so I'm kind of letting you see a bit of both sides. There's the Tandy right there. It's just doing its thing. Ultima 6 is slow, but I wanted to kind of show that there's no audio coming from the computer or coming from the TV with certain games. Maybe someone on YouTube can kind of... Calm. If you have the answer as to why this happens, leave it in the comments below. And then all of a sudden it started working. What the heck? And as you can see now, it's actually showing in the proper mode.
Maybe it was that graphics acceleration driver that I was using that might have been causing the problem. Maybe it was interfering with the sound coming from the Tandy. Kind of let you see the whole shebang here. See if the it actually plays the game now. Because I was fiddling with this a whole bunch this morning trying to get this to work. So let's see if it actually does something. Maybe... Um, Maybe that driver makes it lock up. I don't know. So strange. But yeah. This is kind of where we ended up sitting around for a few minutes. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, come on, man. Lots of video. Any day now, Tandy. Any day now. But yeah, I don't I don't know what was causing it not to work. That's so strange. Uh, so 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 strange. Um hmm. Anyway, I gotta do control alt delete dance here. There you go. Control alt delete. There we go. This is what it looks like when I boot up on the TV. Memory size 640K. I have them both kind of running in here. It actually doesn't look bad in mono on this TV either. I you see my memory counter right up there. You see my. Power on self test, testing my drives. Here we go, we're gonna boot off this. The MS DOS 622. Um, so I'm gonna try clean boot. Maybe that was what was causing it. It was one of those no print or graphics accelerator drivers. So we'll try it out. Uh, CD slash. Uh, Oh, gotta go. 